What's up you guys, welcome back again to your Heroclix headquarters. Today we're going to be counting down the top five Hank Pims in Heroclix. That's all the giant man, Ant-Man, and everything in between. So without further ado, let's get to the list. All right, you guys, starting us off at number five for top five Hank Pym, Ant-Man and Giant Mans, is uh, this Ant-Man from the Age of Ultron set coming in at 150 points. This is the one that's actually like writing a couple of ants, which is awesome. He actually comes in the main set. Uh, quick history lesson in case you guys don't know, there was uh, in the Age of Ultron set several Ant-Mans and Hank Pym's and Wasp and Yellow Jackets and Giant Mans and Goliaths and all that stuff uh, that all had this morph many identities trait that says give ant-man a move or close combat action that deals no pushing damage pushing damage is not a thing anymore anyway so that's awesome after resolutions uh, replace him with any character with this trait on the same click number then if this character started the game on his 50 point starting line the character it is replaced with can't be healed past its 50 point starting line um, so that's, you know, obviously just so you can't get around, do some weird shenanigans. But um, yeah, so he starts, they all have a 100 or 50 point line. You could switch between all of them. There's literally like a dozen options. I'm pretty sure about 12 of them. Um, so I wanted to, I could have just lumped them all together and talked about all of them at once. But I wanted to kind of specifically point out my favorite ones uh, because... I thought that would kind of be cheating to just talk about 12 figures at once. Anyway, because uh, there was another uh, morph, uh, Hank Pym, in uh, Chaos War, uh, which with almost as many options as well. So you could also check those out. They're a little too old to really be useful anymore, but these ones are still pretty good. Anyway, getting right into it now here, he also has a special movement power that says Ant-Man can use charge, sidestep, and stealth. Give Ant-Man a free action and an adjacent friendly character with uh, normal size has either uh, tiny or giant size until your next turn. So I really like this one because it lets you change the sizes of your friendly characters. Um, just, you know, being able to make them tiny so they can get the plus one for range attacks or be carried around or to make them giant and, and be able to have giant reach and everything and, you know, be able to see over other characters and stuff if they need to make range attacks. Both great options, really helps out the team. Um, it is just until your next turn, sadly, so you can't get the super willpower from giant size, but still useful. And having charge, sidestep, and stealth all at once is great. And improve movement for characters. Uh, of course, hindering no longer matters, but the characters is still really good. And yeah, he just does that. And he starts with, um, at the 100 point line, the uh, charge, sidestep, and stealth special with some poison, combat reflexes, and uh, of course, two damage with exploit weakness. So he has a few different ways of damaging you there. Nothing huge, uh, but he does then get some precision strike and then back to poison. Um, and then for the 50 point line, he does start with perplex. So I actually usually used to run him at the 50 point line. Um, you know, charge, sidestep, stealth, uh, the perplex, and just making friendly characters different sizes was really great. And you could carry him around too because he was tiny. Uh, then you also, you know, clicks into some other stuff there. So not amazing stats by today's standards. Uh, but for the time, he was very solid. And I still think for 50 points, the size changing and the perplex could still come in handy even today. So uh, I would love if they legacy carded like the whole Ant-Man uh, morphing set would be pretty cool. But anyway, uh, for all those reasons, this guy's coming in at number five for me. All right, coming in at number four for me is this giant man, also from the Age of Ultron set. And I love the sculpt on this thing. One of my favorite giant man sculpts ever, you know, just the, uh, you know, growing doo -doo -doo -doo, all the way to giant size is so cool. So well done. Um, again, I would love this one to get a legacy card or even for them to reuse the sculpt of that one. I wouldn't even be mad. I would love to see another version of that one. Uh, but anyway, so he also has the, uh, morphing trait, many identities to be able to switch between all the different Hank Pims. Then he also has this awesome trait, stand tall next to Hulk and Thor. If another friendly character with the Avengers keyword and a damage value of four or more hits an opposing character, Giant Man can make a close combat attack as a free action this turn. Very useful, gets him extra attacks. Now he does have an extra 158 point line, but uh, he would have to be the 100 or the 50 point line, I believe, to swap out. I don't know. He might be able to use that once he takes damage. It's been a long time, I forget. Uh, I don't think I ever did that just because 
you know, it's whatever, kind of feel like you're losing points or something. Um, I guess you could kind of be stealing points away. No, because it's a replacement, they would still get the same amount of points. Yeah, I feel like you'd just be losing points if you swapped him, if you played him at 158. Anyway, he does have this special attack power that says Giant Man can use Quake with a lock damage value of 3. When he does, after actions resolve, destroy all objects, walls, and blocking terrain within two squares. So Super Quake that he doesn't really get until late dial. Unfortunately, I wish he started with that. But for 158, he does have 10 movement charge, 10 attack quake, 17 impervious, 4 damage without wit. And you do have that giant size there for the giant reach quake. Um, being able to outwit people over other characters is always useful too. And um, then he just has a couple clicks like that there. Get some empower. And then here on his 100 point line, I did actually like playing him on the 100 point line quite a bit. Uh, because you'd have that in power, so you could actually like just move him up, have somebody else charge, as long as they had at least a three damage and hit, his empower would make their damage four. Um, and it doesn't, his trait doesn't look for printed damage values, it's just damage value of four hits. So if, if he empowers somebody to four and they hit, then he gets the free attack afterwards. So that was great. Um, and, you know, playing him at the 158 for, was also good because he could also punch for four damage um, at, if somebody else did as well. So it kind of gives you those extra free attacks are always good. And then here's the 50 point line. So he starts with sidestep, the super quake power, some outwit. Um, you basically always want to use the quake because it's going to be three damage instead of his two. And then he gets a little Battle Fury before finally KOing there. So yeah, pretty long dial. He has pretty high points, especially for today's game. Uh, but I had a ton of fun with him at the 100 point line, empowering people up to four damage and then getting a free attack. Um, and I think he's pretty good, decent still at all three of his point values. One of the best sculpts for Giant Man in the game, definitely. And for all those reasons, he's coming in at number four for me. All right, coming in at number three, we have Goliath this time. Um, so yeah, originally I wanted that giant man to be my number three, but, uh, I took another look at this guy and I gotta say he is just plain better. I don't know why I didn't use him more, uh, back in the day. I think I just was more a fan of giant man than Goliath, like the sculpt look cooler and stuff. Uh, but this one's insane too. So he also has the morphing trait switched between them. But then he has this other trait here that says give Goliath a free action until your next turn. He has colossal size. And when he does, there's a little typo here, when he does and he makes and when he makes <laughs> a close combat attack, he considers all squares within three squares and line of fire as adjacent. So yeah, when he does and he makes a close combat attack, then he's got three square giant reach. But um, you might think, why does it say that? It already gives you that. Well, it didn't used to. Colossal size used to give you no giant reach at all. That was actually a 2017 rules change. So um, it's great to see that that is already just in the rules now. Um, but regardless, you can basically just give him a free action to make him colossal uh, and get that extra square of reach. It's not hurting anything. He still gets the extra square of reach regardless. Um, but it's just really nice that that's for everybody now. Anyway, he also has this special movement power that says he can use charge when he does and moves in a direct line after actions resolve. He may make an additional close combat attack targeting all opposing characters whose square he moved through but didn't already target with an attack this turn. For this attack, each hit character is dealt three damage. Uh, so he has 140, 100, or 50 points. Again, the swaps at the 100 or the 50 lines. And uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, he does have a special damage power that says adjacent friendly characters can use energy shield deflection, which is great. I think he gets that on the 50 point line. Um, so taking a look at what his dial here, he does start with that special charge that he can then uh, make an attack against everybody he moved through, which is amazing, especially now with the close combat expert working with, you know, all close attacks. So this guy actually got better because of the change to close combat expert. Um, so he'll be charging with a 10 movement, three square giant reach, most likely because colossal size, if you want to make him colossal, um, and you know, with a 12 attack for four damage, and then everybody he moved through is going to take three damage on top of that. So he can do massive amounts of damage. He's got an 18 invincible to keep him, you know, pretty well protected there. 
Then you get some sidestep and some invuln. Then uh, for the 100 line, he's also just as good, basically. Um, you know, he's missing one on most of his stats, but he still has the tra the trample, you know, special charge. 10 attack, 17 with invuln, 3 damage, close combat expert. Close combat expert still helps here to bump that up to an 11 attack, so he's still really good at 100 points. And then you get some perplex here and there, some more sidestep, some quake down to toughness. Um, oh, here's the 50 point line. So a sidestep, quake, toughness, and perplex. Nothing too crazy, but if he does take some damage, he gets 18 defend, and adjacent friendly characters can use energy shield deflection. And with that sidestep, it's really good. I do wish he started with that instead of the perplex maybe, um, but it is really nice to have anyway to be able to defend and give out that energy shield. So yeah, he does a lot for the team. He can do a lot of damage for sure. And uh, I still think he's pretty decent for his points even today. He kind of just got better with the changes to some powers. So for all those reasons, he's coming in at number three. All right, and coming in at number two on my list here, we have the actual colossal giant man. Um, so there was this same sculpt of a giant man also in the Chaos War set. And this one came in like a cool box set for the, uh, the Hank Pym morphs. Um, so there was a bunch of them in the main Age of Ultron set, and then there was like a special box set that had this guy and a few more of them to swap between. And all the ones in the box set also came with these ant tokens that they all generated. So for some of them, when you morph into them, they generate an ant token. And for some of the bigger characters, when you morph into them, they turn that ant token into a giant ant. Uh, but this guy, uh, he also has the morphing trait to morph between them. This is the trait I'm talking about here with the giant ant thing, where if he's brought in through the morph ability, uh, you can replace an adjacent ant swarm bystander with a giant ant bystander, um, which, I mean, the ant swarms were annoying enough by themselves. I'll try to I'll try to post them on screen for you guys or something, because I don't really feel like digging mine out right now. They're somewhere. Uh, but then he also has a trait where he can use the giant reach ability, which... You know, again, uh, the rules changed. He can have a three square giant reach, which just makes him all the better, you know, even better than having regular giant reach for two. Um, but then here we go, starting us off with his special attack power. He has flurry and outwit. If the target of his outwit takes damage this turn, he may use outwit a second time as a free action. So if he outwits somebody and they take damage, he can outwit them again. So you basically outwit somebody, punch them, uh, like outwit their defense, hit them, and then outwit whatever they have to attack you with, like their charge or their penetrating blast or something like that, or their outwit. So having that double outwit is really, really useful. Then he also has a special damage power that says Giant Man can use Perplex and Quake. When he uses Quake, if his attack total is at least two or greater than his target's defense value, uh, give the hit character an action token, and it can't make ranged combat attacks during its next turn. Super useful, yet again. Um, so this guy has a really long dial, of course, because he's a colossal, but we'll try to click through it some here. So he's got 10 movement charge with three square giant reach, mind you, with that 11 attack flurry and potential double outwit, a 19 impervious and five damage. Then he goes to some sidestep. He's still keeping those awesome uh, special, you know, we've got the perplex and outwit to start with. Um, so that is his 300 point line. I'm sorry, I meant to show that first. 300, 200, 150 point lines. Uh, so this is his 200 point line. Still has the charge and the perplex and outwit and flurry and quakes for those special powers. He gets a little empower there, some sidestep. Um, going back up to invincible there. Uh, so this should be his 100 point line. So he does have charge flurry with that double outwit, invincible, four damage, 10 attack. Still really good at 100. Um, and then some sidestep and power. And then we should see the 50 point line here, sidestep and power, toughness. Um, and then he goes into the flurry special there. So yeah, he only really has that quake perplex special like on his first few dials. Um, but I think he's really worth it at either of his point lines, 300, 200, 100, 50. I think they all kind of bring something different to the table. I really, really like the 300 point one. It was super fun. But yeah, I would love to see this guy make a return also. Like I said, legacy card, the whole morph set, I would love it. Knock them all down a few points and they'd be great still. Uh, this guy was super, super fun to play in like a you know 500 point game or something. He could really just charge in there and tear it up. So yeah, for all those reasons, he's coming in at number two.
All right, so as always, before we get into our number one pick, I've got a few honorable mentions to go through. These are my actual honorable mentions, but I also want to give an honorable mention or at least some type of shout out to the rest of the morphing set from the Age of Ultron set. Um, they're all great for different reasons. Like you've got this Hank Pym that's got like sidestep, pulse wave, outwit, and prob and uh, kind of protects your team against Ultrons. You've got this Hank Pym, which I used to love for 50 points because he had TK and you could, at the time, push him by TKing a couple of times and he went to barrier. Uh, but for 100 points, he does start with TK and barrier and sidestep. Um, so he's pretty great too. Then you've got both of the yellow jackets here. Um, one of them is actually pretty good with the running shot penetrating blast as a decent range attacker. This one's got charge exploit. So, you know, they're more deadly fighter types. You've got this other Goliath here, who's just another like charge super strength kind of guy. He's kind of whatever, but he does have traded super senses and probability control against range attacks only. Um, you've got a wasp here, which has uh, just some running shot energy explosion and leadership. And um, a lot of these guys, like I said, they generate the ants and some of them give improvements to the ants. Like this one gave the ant swarm tokens uh, and power. This guy gave them like plus three speed and stealth or something. Um, yeah, they all do different things. There's this ant man, which was pretty cool too, but uh, this one had some special effect where you could KO the ant swarm bystanders to heal some clicks. And then you've got the classic no sculpt ant man with the 20 defense stealth and outwit. And uh, yeah, I think one of the one of them gave the ant swarms exploit weakness or something like that also. But yeah, all of them get an honorable mention as well. But also really quickly, I want to talk about these guys here. So let's start off with this Ant-Man from the Avengers. Uh, and was it the Avengers, original Avengers Fast Forces, I believe, for the uh, also for the Age of Ultron set. We got a lot of Ant-Mans back then, okay? Uh, Avengers founder trait, when he's adjacent to another friendly character with this trait, he can use some power. Always nice. Um, he has close combat expert. And uh, with the new wording on close combat experts, basically whenever he makes a close attack, he gets normal size until your next turn. Uh, but I did like him for the 19 defense with super senses, stealth, outwit, precision strike, you know, 75 or 50 points. For 50 points, he did have charge with the close combat expert. So he was pretty good at either point line. Um, I never really got to play him too much because every time I played an Ant-Man, I was playing one of the swap ones, but he's pretty good too. Um, there was also a yellow jacket in Civil War, the actual event set, the slop, if you want to call it that. And then uh, this one was pretty cool. He was really good and sealed for the set, for the event. He did get to heal whenever a friendly character was KO'd, uh, but mainly because of this trait where he could use Perplex. And when he does, you could choose one. Uh, he could use it normally or as a unique modifier. He could use Perplex to target all friendly characters within four squares in line of fire, choosing a single combat value to modify. So just being able to Perplex up your entire team's defense or attack or whatever you needed was really good. Um, his stats are just really not there however sidestep and some willpower nine attack two damage he gets a little outwit there toughness he never goes above a nine attack two damage though so he was really only there to perplex your whole team up which wasn't too bad but mostly just good for sealed and then last but not least we have um, the newest version of yellow jacket here from uh, avengers black panther and the illuminati actually kind of forgot this guy was even in the set uh, but he is and you can see here he's got a special defense power in the middle of his dial. It gives him willpower and tiny size. And then he has leadership and free choose one outwit or perplex. He can use that until your next uh, until your next turn. So being able to choose outwit or perplex is always useful. Charge super strength, uh, not too bad. He gets a little in cap and exploit there. Only 55 points. So, you know, he's doing a lot. Um, he could have definitely been on the list. But once again, like I said, I kind of forgot about him. So he never really impressed me enough to really want to play him. But he is pretty useful. Could definitely be in the top five. Uh, but I just had so much more fun with all this sh the morphing Hank Pims that I really wanted to talk about them. Anyway, that's it for all of my honorable mentions. Uh, without further ado, let's get to the number one Hank Pym. All right, guys, and if you haven't already guessed it, growing into the number one spot here, we have, boom, giant man Hank Pym from, uh, well, he was just a convention exclusive, actually. He's not from any set. Um, this guy is massive. Uh, I do love all the colossal 
giant man figures. They're so much fun to play. And this one is just by far the best of the best. Um, I think even in today's game, he's still solid, personally. So he's got Avengers and Scientist keywords. He's got a Colossal Retaliation, where you can give him a free action. If no other Colossal Retaliation power has been activated this turn, choose an opposing character that attacked Giant Man or damaged a friendly character since your last turn. Place Giant Man such that he can make a close attack targeting the chosen character, and also target all other characters within three squares on Line of Fire. Hit characters are each dealt three damage instead of normal damage. Hit characters without flight are knocked back. Um, so it's awesome. It's kind of like a giant three damage quake for the retail. Uh, three square reach as well because he's colossal. Then he's got a special attack power that says giant man can use quake when he does. Giant reach X where X is his current click number. Which is insane because uh, you know it gets pretty high up there. Then he's got giant man can use energy shield deflection and toughness on his defense power, which is really nice to have because, you know, being a colossal, pretty easy to get shot at. Uh, then he has stop. If giant man began the game on the 15 point starting line, he can't attack smaller characters except via colossal retaliation. So uh, then there's inside of his card there and boom, this is his dial. I think for 200 points, this is a great dial. He's got a whopping 19 clicks of life. Uh, so a lot of health to get through. And starting off at the 200 point line, he's got 10 movement charge, 11 attack quake, 4 damage. And again, that's with a uh, 3 square giant reach, which really helps out the charge and the quake and everything. 19 defense with energy shield and toughness, so that's a 21 from range. If you can actually find enough hindering to park him in, it's a 22 from range. Um, so, you know, actually really hard to hit. And, you know, the quake to knock people back and everything means that they're going to most likely have to shoot him. Uh, and he can punch a lot farther than other people can. So just keep knocking them back. They, have, they might not be able to charge you. They might not be able to shoot you. Um, it's very, very good. And then even if he does get hit, he still has, like, some outwit here in the middle. That's where he gets this special quake. Um, which unfortunately doesn't continue much further, but he does get up to a six square giant reach quake there on click number six, which is just insane. Sidestep and then giant reach everybody six squares away with quake is pretty nuts. Uh, for his 125 point line, it's still pretty solid. You got sidestep, uh, 10 attack super strength, 17 combat reflexes, four damage exploit weakness, lots of four damages in there. So he's really solid damage dealer the whole time. Pretty solid defense the whole time. Um, this one, you know, I don't really like the 125 line as much because the combat reflexes don't really come in handy as much because, again, you kind of want to punch people from three squares away. Um, but it is still pretty useful. It's better than nothing, you know what I mean? Um, he does have pretty decent attack values the whole way, mostly 11s and 10s. There's a few 9s here in the middle um, and at the end, but it is fairly consistent, and, you know, he does drop to a few 16s there at the end, but at least he does still have that stop click, and he does have some perplex there to help as well. So he's just a really, really long dial, really hard to get him off his top click if he's at 200. Honestly, I only ever play him at 200 or 15 uh, as a Colossal Retaliator. I think those are the sweet spots. Like, like I said, 125 is okay, but just... I I don't really like it as much as the other ones because yeah if you play him at 200 point line it's just harder to get him there and it's a lot more to work to get him all the way to the stop click i've had a few games where somebody just attacked him attacked him attacked him the whole game and then he finally hit his stop click and then it was time <laughs> like it just took that long to get through him uh but yeah so i mean the stop click is great for the retail if you just want to retail also um and yeah i like him a lot he's really useful uh, you know, you, you can just throw him on any team just for the retail, or he can be the main headliner for 200. So uh, he's amazing. The sculpt is really cool with the, you know, the wing and everything. So for all those reasons, he's coming in at number one. All right, you guys, that does it for this one. As always, make sure to let me know who your favorite Hank Pims are down in the comments, as well as make sure to let me know who you'd like to see on a future top five list. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button because it does help me out a lot. And don't forget to click that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And if you guys like to help support the channel even more, make sure to check the links in the description for our Patreon. For as little as $1 a month, you can see your name here on the credits with all these other awesome supporters, as well as be entered to win our Patreon giveaways each month. So make sure to check that out. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Till next time, this has been Hero Clicks Headquarters, signing off.